Alright, what is up you guys? It's James from James Chef House and in today's video I had planned to go over the mouse rack. Uh, my buddy Glenn from Legless Excellence gave me an old mouse rack. He's doing his spring cleaning a little early. Uh, he actually gave me a bunch of stuff. It was pretty awesome. Love that guy. Love working for him. Great guy. Awesome snakes, awesome personality, and just all around good good time when I'm over there. So he gave me this mouse rack all throw a picture up on the screen with the bucket that feels, feeds into the tubes and all that and it's got like a little bit of mold thrown on the on this foot but I was like ah it doesn't matter um, but there were some issues as I, I should have I knew a little bit before I added the mice um, the the grate where the food goes he was afraid the mice weren't getting enough food so he cut some of the squares even bigger and as soon as I put my mice in, um, a couple of them stuck their whole heads through, a couple of adults. Um, and then of course, all the tubing where the water is running, it leaked in like four different places. Basically it was like leaking water in the carpet. And I didn't want that happening. I didn't really have anywhere to put it where it could leak like that. It wasn't like, you know, a garage or a shed or anything. You can't leak, it just, it has to be waterproof. So. I put it back in my mouse tubs like I, I have been. Uh, this would have helped, I wouldn't have had to change the water's option. I only had the gallon halfway filled, but dreams don't always come true. So, I'm probably just gonna end up chucking that. I'm not really sure. I'm sure I'll keep the tubs or the bucket or something. Maybe not the bucket, the bucket was one of the things I was leaking. Um, I'll probably keep the tubs for something, but nevertheless, it's like, hey, it's Super Bowl Sunday, as I'm recording this, you're seeing this on Monday afterwards, like, I don't know who would. I don't know, 49ers of California, I guess, or 49ers, I don't know. But nevertheless, I'm sitting here, wake up from a 45 minute nap, and I'm like, cool, what am I gonna do my video on, then you get uh, instead, I guess, so. Here I am, I don't know, I'm gonna show you all my adult Presta Geckos. Now, Basically what I'm all I'm gonna do is everything in these glass tanks and anything in a big tub. So anything that's adult that's you know being raised up to breed or something that had for a long time is basically an adult but I'm going to sell it at the show. I'm gonna to try to sell it at the show. Um, you always end up coming back from stuff. So let's get started and somewhere in the middle of there I'll throw you the Computer and I'll show you how I keep track of all my geckos. Sounds like a plan. Let's go. Let's do it. So let's start out. I have my four tanks right here. I've got those two big tubs. Well, actually, that one's frogs. I got that big tub and two over here. Let's start with the big tubs. Um, I don't. I've said this before. I don't like keeping in tubs, but to some extent, they make a little bit of sense. So this guy is Fellow, he is my oldest baby that I've raised up right now. Uh, my second oldest Crested Gecko I've ever produced. And he's obviously a male. Um, this guy is pretty jumpy, he's not showing it right now, but definitely fired up. And he just hangs out in here, he's got all this space to himself. Hopefully I'll sell him at the show. Um, you know, the older a Gecko gets, the more it eats and the more it eats the less profit I'm going to make off of it, so hopefully I sell them soon. Alright, who is this? This... I don't know this one's name, which is stupid, it's Omni. Uh, I had a group of Crested Geckos, and my buddy wanted me to name them all after Dodge Cars, so there's a whole chunk of them, and I sold a bunch of them that are named after Dodge Cars, but this guy, um, I believe I got him from Pangea. Uh, lots of Dalmatian spots to compare to anything I have, and it is a male. So that's why I picked up Scallop, who you'll see in a little bit, and this will really get my Dalmatian project uh, off to a really good start as soon as these two are old enough to breed. And the stuff I had was producing, you know, very small Dalmatian spot animals. Every once in a while one came out with a lot, but they were so tiny. I need something with big spots that's going to produce, and of course, you know, the best stuff that comes out I'm going to hold back. And every once in a while I'll let some nice stuff go, but... I definitely want to produce some nice Dalmatians and get my projects even better and better. Alright, and I'm not going to show you all the babies, but this is the last tub. 
And this is my male race car. I have too many males. Uh, race car, I don't know if the camera's picking up how orange he is, but he's super orange. Uh, awesome pinstripe, doesn't quite go all the way down. There are three groups I wanna get going. Well, I guess four if you consider the lily white. I'll probably put the lily white in a pinstripe group though, but I want a pinstripe group, I want a Dalmatian group, and I want an orange group. I think personally that's what's gonna sell. And so this guy is gonna be the male to the orange group. I have a female. I believe she's gonna end up being a female. She's a little bit smaller than him, um, raising up, and hopefully there'll be a pair one day. And if we pan over here, I've got my four tanks, of course, the that one's gargoyle geckos. So pinstripes will be down there, Dalmatians will be up there, and oranges will be up there. And of course, I'll probably um, you know, fill up with maybe three more tanks, so that way I can move the male back and forth. So to start out, I probably won't have the orange group going for a little bit until I get some more tanks. But let's move on to the stuff inside the tanks, shall we? All right, so let's take a quick break from all those geckos and I'll show you exactly how I inventory all my geckos and how I keep track of them. Let me throw you in the laptop real quick and it'll all make sense. All right, so you can see right here, it is a uh, Super Bowl, it's game day. I don't know what that link really brings you to Google's ad, I don't know. Uh, I have no interest in watching that. Um, so the way I do it, and this is you know the way that we've done it at my work, I've seen some other people do it this way, and basically it's, it's Google Sheets, and Google Sheets can be used in so many ways. Uh, I've actually used it for all sorts of stuff, and I'll explain in a little bit. I don't know if you need a Gmail to do this. I have exclusively Gmails. Here's my account, jamesjepthouse at gmail.com. Um, I can access my YouTube, my Gmail, I don't know maps, I don't know why you would access the Play Store, I'm on a laptop, I honestly don't know. Um, but let's go to Drive, because Google Sheets is part of Drive. So I open up my Drive, get Google Drive for desktop, isn't that where I'm at? No, that's not, okay. So I have my Drive, I have all sorts of stuff down here, a uh, sneak peek for people who don't know. Um, yes, yeah, sneak, sneak peek, I guess. Um, so, this is some other stuff I can do. Um, I can go on here and I can view my wholesale orders that I've ordered from people. I can enter, like this, the animal description, the number, how many I want, and the price of each animal. And you can set these bars, so they're like this. I can move it like this, and it'll always stay, and I love these. Um, and you can even... <laughs> These, so each individual box is considered a cell and you can do so much and you can do so many shortcuts with the keyboard and if I wanted to I could do you know sub adult Dalmatian male if I wanted four of them times 18 if I go here I can do what is it equals sum product of C9 I don't know if it has to be capital C9, comma, D9, and 72. It'll it'll sit there and do the math for you. 18 times 4, is that 72? I don't know. That doesn't sound right. But anyway, there's, there's I probably wrote it wrong, but there's all sorts of equations. And you can copy paste that, you can you know do all sorts of things with this, you can control find, you can filter out. If you had, you know, twenty thousand animals, you could filter out all the boys or all the girls or anything you wanted. So um, let's exit out of that. And I that order is not complete. It's I mean the date's old, but that's not exactly what I got. It is all sorts of stuff. To do list before the show, I don't want to go over that. Let's go into my 2018s. So for something to be considered a 2018, because I did not breed geckos in 2018, uh, it has to be, you know, I have to have bought it as an adult in 2019. Um, not including Scallop and Hazelnut, who just got named today. So the way I do it is I number them, you know, 1801, 18 being the year, uh, this is 2018 inventory um, the morph if it's anything special I put it here you know I would put lily white for my lily white here this one's just really dark and this one's this really nice style so I put those Dalbing Dalmatian of course 
box number. I put this category here for future, but I haven't used it yet. One thing I've been meaning to do is label all four of my glass tanks and maybe even the bigger tubs. Um, just so, you know, when I have more animals, if I'm looking for something specific, I'm not uh, picking the wrong animal, packing the wrong animal, taking a picture of the wrong animal. I want everything to be accurate. Lay date and hatch date. Obviously, I don't have any of that for these geckos because I bought them as adults. Um, I do want to keep track of all the dates that animals were laid, that eggs were laid. Um, just to keep track of the math, I can, you know, if, if some are going, some... If a female lays eggs and she's consistently, you know, putting out eggs that hatch faster, I can see that because I can see the gender. Obviously, M is boy, F is female. Tail, if it has an X, it means it's missing the tail. The dad, if I bought it from someone, I put this right there. Um, actually, hazelnut I bought from Depot, which is my local reptile store, Aquarium and Reptile Depot. The mom... Um, of course, I don't know the status date. This is just the last date I checked on that animal. And this was just a couple days ago. I honestly could update this since we're checking on them all today. Is it proven? PB means proven breeder, which means I've seen it lay eggs. The weight, I don't really worry about the weight too much and I don't need that category to be that big. So I can just adjust it just like that. Um, any notes is where I would say, you know, it was sold. Uh, you know, if it's not making good eggs, this one I is made great eggs so I don't need that one anymore. Uh, this one's got a tail kink and I could say you know maybe what project I'm working with and here when I get here's where I get into sales and stuff so the date I sold it, the price I sold it for, I, yeah I sold a Holga for $150 uh, as possibly gravid adult female and the male I had her bred with was stunning so that was a steal. I feel like I made good money on that too and then status. Um, again, this category doesn't need to be quite as big. So B is breeding. Um, anything that's pink, highlighted pink is a breeder. This one can be changed. Uh, usually O means open, S is sold, yellows are sold too. Um, so when you're filtering out, if you're filtering out, you know, which animals do I want to post on Morph Market, I can filter out all the breeders, I can filter out all the sold. Um, I haven't had to do this yet, but actually I think I have for one. You can, you know, I'll filter out all the dead animals. Um, none are missing, but you can filter out missing animals. Um, I kind of want this category. I get, um, resize column, hide column, clear column. I want to move it. Um, There's got to be a way. So, yep, there you go. Status. So I really don't care about the sale date and the sale price because that's not something I'm ever going to be looking at. I'd rather have the status closer. If, if I'm being honest, I'd, I would might want to zoom out just to have everything visible. But I don't really care. And again, I want to move this down and I want to move this over. So that way, when I'm way over here looking at how much I sold it for, I can still see Olga uh, over here. And then, you know, if I'm way down, I can still see what category means what. So, without rambling too much, let's look into the 2019s. Did I double click it? It's, yeah, there you go. Um, so, this one is obviously a lot bigger. There's a lot more animals, a lot more going on. So, let's start at the top um, and we'll get going. Cletus sold. I didn't really write any more to this one except for my Lily White. So Cletus, nothing special, no box number. I know what day he hatched. Um, he was a male. I did never wrote that. Actually, no, he was a female. Um, I can really go through and update these genders on a lot of these. Um, of course, any of that sold doesn't really matter. I don't know all the genders of those that sold. Um, I think this one was a female too. I definitely regret selling that one. Um, but I can tell you who the dad and the mom was if I know them. Um, usually I can tell who laid eggs based on who's hanging out there. Um, you know, these are wholesale orders from Pangea. This is a show I bought from Paradise Crested Geckos. I bought this one online from Tiki's Geckos. You see these, uh, what do you call them? Ah, parentheses. Um, parentheses, 1801 or two or three, meaning it was one of those females in that tank 
Uh, I don't know which one exactly, but it was one of those two. Again, here that is again. Um, this one I got from Trent from a gecko I gave to him. Of course, I talked about uh, the red being an uh, animal that died, unfortunately, with the D. Let me, oops, let me make status smaller. Nope, that's not what I want. And then put it right there. You can see. what date an animal sold for and how much I made off of it, Durango. Um, yeah, I didn't make a lot off of him. Um, and yes, what is this one? Ram? Do I still have Dodge Ram? I should. I need to look into that. All these, yeah, all these white ones need to be O. O stands for open. And if you also see all the green ones, are K for keeper. These are animals I want to raise up to breed. Of course, my lily white, race car, neon, and bingo. Bingo is a baby right now. I put full pinstripe in the notes. I honestly should have put that in the morph stripe. So there's always really stuff you could be updating and slowly going with. And I'm sure a couple more of these are missing tails by now. Weights aren't exactly um, important. I, I find unless I'm putting them on morph market and if I put it on morph market it'll probably have a little tag of course it says who I sold animals to um, but yeah so you can fiddle around with this you can make different categories you don't have to have all these categories um, Google Sheets is awesome you can rename it you can format something so if I type in 7-13 it'll automatically put the year that we're in behind it so if I go over here, this these columns formatted. So if I go, oh, well, it's February second, and then it automatically puts the year in, and then there you go. Um, and you can do that with the dollar signs. I think I have that in this category. If I said I sold it twelve, twelve dollars, it'll automatically um, fill that in. So this is Google Sheets. This is what I use. I definitely don't hop on it enough, just because I have so few geckos. I'm not always worried about it being accurate. But it's something I wanted to start now because, you know, down the road when I have 200 geckos, it's like, well, geez, now I have to put all these in and I have to sit down and do it and make sure everything's in here. So that was a big explanation of this. Let's finish up showing off those geckos, shall we? All right. So that was all the inner workings. And of course, it's not all together. It's not all perfect. Um, but I don't have that many geckos at the end of the day. Like I have a lot, sure, but I have not so many that I can remember most of their names and keep track of all of them, especially my breeders because I have so few. So let's go back and finish with the rest of the animals, shall we? So I've mentioned this, uh, I think I just mentioned this actually. This tank is gargoyle geckos, so I'm not gonna go over what's in here, but let's go under down below. These are gonna be the youngest geckos in the video and one thing I do sorry the sun's super bright here I'll come over here one thing I do is I'll print out labels of the animals with all their information that I feel needed and that way when I move the males I can keep track of where they're at I don't keep up on it and I definitely should but let's open this tank and see who we can find it's always a challenge right so this one right here is another Dalmatian female I'm raising up and she is super in shed right now, but she's definitely growing huge. She's got some nice big splotches. Um, I believe I hatched that one. I don't remember off the top of my head. I've got so many geckos, uh, especially when you have so many coming and going all the time. And then down here is the newest addition to this tank. If I can grab him or her. Uh, this one I think might be a boy. Look at that pinstripe though. Look at this male. Oh my goodness. This is almost a quad stripe. That's the kind of thing I want to add. You know, not, it's got a complete pinstripe. Of course I have, uh, I think Bingo, a baby. There's terrible glare. I got a baby named Bingo I'm raising up that I hatched out. Of course it's a fresh baby, so it's going to be a while, but it is an amazing pinstripe. And then somewhere in here, I think I see it. This will probably end up going in the pinstripe uh, 
the pinstripe tank just because it is my lily white. Um, so this guy is also in shed right now, that's why it's super pale. Uh, but that's absolutely a beautiful gecko, and these guys are well on their way to growing big and strong. And hopefully I'll have a little trio of Dalmatians going soon. That's going to be a big step up for me. Um, I do buy a lot of Dalmatians now to sell, but I'd like to produce my own and have my own line of them going. Let's move on to the next tank. So this tank is where it's all started. This is uh, the tank that was originally given to me with a breeding pair of crusted geckos. Uh, let's start out with the first female that was given to me, and this is Bella. Bella is an absolutely monster. Look at that. Almost a full pinstripe, some nice Dalmatian spots, and she is just a beast. A huge head on this girl. Just an absolute monster. She eats like crazy. And then over here we have Sarah hanging down. Come on. I bought Sarah or actually Sarah was given to me not too long ago. She's a good size too. And she lays eggs every once in a while, not as frequent as I would like. Um, it has been cold here in California. And of course, you don't really keep crested geckos on heat. So the geckos did slow down a bit. And this is hazelnut up here, my newest addition. Super dark right here. I wish she would have been this dark when I took a picture of her earlier for uh, Instagram. But she is absolutely stunning right here absolutely gorgeous i can't remember if the male's in this tank or the other one but nevertheless it is time to move him yep there he is it is time to move him uh i move him about every week and that just ensures that you know after a female lays eggs maybe she has a couple days off and then uh he in uh, breeds with her again i don't really know exactly how to word that in a nice way but what can I say? This is not child-friendly content for the most part. I, I've actually seen people, because okay, so it's it's the whole COPPA thing, right? So I've actually seen people who will swear a bunch right at the beginning just to make YouTube tell them no. Because you can check that it's not for kids and they'll still, you know, demonetize you and take your comments away. And like, I'm not monetized by any means, but I'd like to get there. And this girl... Of course, is scallop. She's super jumpy. She's not quite breeding size yet, but there's no really harm. There's no real harm in putting her with the male. Um, until my Dalmatian male is up to size, I'd like to get her, you know, going with this male. And even even if you know it takes a clutch or two after she's in with a new male to really, you know, get the sperm from the new male, you know, who cares? It is what it is. I'm not super worried. But she's got tons of spots on her. The camera doesn't really pick it up very well. And then down here is Tegan. Of course, I showed you guys Sarah. Tegan and Sarah I got together, and Tegan's in shed right now. Uh, but these two I'll probably be taking in the show and asking, you know, 150 for. They're, they're not the nicest crested geckos, but they're adult females and they're proven breeders. And they're possibly gravid with that male. So that kind of ups the value a lot on them. And then somewhere in here, I have one final gecko. Let's see. Oh, look at that. This is Paradise. Paradise, of course, is running away. Um, come on. No, she's climbing, she's climbing. Um, I don't really know what I'm going to do with Paradise yet. Of course, at this point, I'm just using her to breed. I, I try to keep really more just two females per cage. But at this point, I have three in each of them. Um, she's got some Dalmatian spots. She's got some pinstriping. And she's a little bit orange, so she's a great combination of the three. But I have no reason to keep her forever, so... And look at that, the male's latched onto her breeding right now. So, this may not be the prettiest sight, but that's just breeding right there. That's, that's what they do in nature, and that's how they're going to get me some eggs, and that's how they're going to get you guys some baby geckos to purchase. So, anyway, that is it for all my adult geckos. Um, I... We'll be selling, like I said, I'll be selling a couple of them at the show, making a good amount of money off of them. If they come back, they come back, and if they come back, they lay eggs. So I'm not really worried about it. I'm going to price them high and appropriately because uh, I don't necessarily want them. If they're going to sell, I want to get money for them. If they're not going to sell, I'm still going to be happy. So like I said, the show is in Daly City, San Francisco, this weekend, February 8th and 9th. Today is Sunday of the Super Bowl. 
Anyway, I'm James from James Jeptiles. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. All that really helps out. Hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, jamesjeptiles.gmail.com. Um, I'm going to try to link my morph market down below. There's only two geckos right now. When I get back from the show, I'm going to be posting a bunch of geckos on there. So stay, stay tuned and keep yourself updated, right? Anyway, have a good one.